Hey guys, what's up? Darcy here at Six Strings Nine Lives, back for an album review. Today I'm going to take a look at the brand new studio album from Flotsam and Jetsam called I Am The Weapon, released just this past Friday on September 13th via AFM Records, so that's four in a row. Glad they finally found a good home with AFM Records. You know, that they've had their share, share of a label jumping over the years, but this is a band that I can proudly say I've been with since, let's call it day one and a half. And why I say that is I never knew about them until I knew that this was the band that Jason Newstead came from. I should have busted out my uh, original Doomsday for the Deceiver cassette, but anyways, longtime fan, I have not missed a release. I've done a ranking on these guys. I will... Uh, I'll probably wait a good six months or so to update my ranking. Uh, not only am I not a day one review guy, I'm not a guy that can fire off a ranking video, you know, two days after a new album comes out. That shit doesn't make sense to me. But anyways, longtime fan. And I really, uh, it's just a band that I, I love to talk about. And uh, one of my probably top six favorite thrash bands for sure. I've mentioned them in several videos, but yeah, brand new album called I Am The Weapon featuring none other than Flotzilla on the cover again, which is three in a row. Very happy. Um, that's something that was uh, a mascot that was underutilized over the years with these guys. I mean, an album, even if, even if this album was total shit back in the day, you'd look at this cover and say, you know what, this cover is awesome. I need to check this out. But anyways, also, um, so fourth album in a row to be released on AFM Records, fourth album artwork done by the same guy. His name is uh, Andy Pilkington for Just Metal Art, I think he's called. I'm sure he's done other metal covers too. So this one, clocking in at 47 minutes, so a, a touch shorter than what they've been doing and only 11 tracks. Their past three albums on AFM Records, which we can hold up, are all 12 tracks and in the range of 49 to 56 minutes. 47 minutes to me is, is much more acceptable. They could even drop one track, and, and and during the review, I'll tell you which track that probably doesn't make a lot of sense, or it was different, I guess, and I don't blame them for trying something different, but what I'm saying is you could have dropped one track cut this baby down to 42 minutes and you got a you know perfect thrash album and touching on that not only is uh, flots thrash they're way more than that they're uh, u.s power metal speed metal very melodic catchy choruses great riffs but back to this so this is uh, the first artwork from uh, this is the self-title from 2016 so this is kind of where there's good stuff before that. I'm actually listening to an album that's now 10 years old called Ugly Noise uh, from 2014. But this is kind of the refocus album and their first to be released on AFM Records. This is the self-titled uh, and the same artist. And then finally, we have the return of Flotzilla on the End of Chaos, which uh, a lot of people love this album. I do too. And I also love this album from 2021. This was actually so called Blood in the Water, uh, Flotzilla on the cover again, and their other logo in the background, which is very cool. So that's kind of this skull logo up in the sky. Always love that little touch on the artwork. But this one, for me, was very high up on my list. It came in at number two for 2021, only to be beaten by a superb album from Todd Latore. Um, his solo album called Rejoice in the Suffering. If you've never listened to that, check that one out too, but also check out this. So yeah, overall, just one of my, like I said, one of my favorite bands. Um, so 11 tracks on this one. And what you're going to get with Flots is, uh, but I don't, I should tell you about the lineup too. You're just going to get lots of melody, great lyrics. Eric is the chief lyricist for the band. Um, two original members, so you have Michael Gilbert on guitars. He is an uh, original uh, member of the band. He did leave for uh, a period um, during the 90s and 2000s, but returned in probably 2013-ish. 
Ken Mary on drums, and Ken Mary is all over these latest four albums. Um, I'm not going to say anything here is, uh, you might say people will say a little bit samey, but Flots do just enough for for me to just come keep coming back. There's things that they try on um, various songs and things like that. Um, here's Eric. Eric's vocals uh, have not lost anything. You can go back to those early albums like Doomsday or listen to an album like Drift or Ugly Noise that I'm listening to all the way to this new album. And he is just top notch. Um, so this is the second album in a row with this exact lineup. Um, this is Bill Bodley took over on bass for Michael Spencer. And then you have Steve Connolly, who's been with the band since um, probably about 2015. So 11 tracks starting off with uh, A New Kind of Hero, which was, was the fourth track that they released. And pay attention to this one. You're going to hear a little bit of the riff from Hardwired in here. It's in there. It's not dominating the song. It's not feeling like they ripped off Metallica in a way, any, in any way. Not to me anyways. I, I couldn't give a shit about that. But atmospheric opening into that little riff. But uh, what you won't get in, in um, this song is, is shitty lyrics like, we're so fucked, we're shit out of luck. You won't get that in here anyway. So, but yeah, keep an ear out for that. Um, yeah, into a, just a great chorus. The part where Eric sings, um, you can be sure I'm here to save you. You can be sure I'm here to save you. Oh, just superb. Uh, second track on the album is called Primal, which was the second track that they released. I thought it was a little bit weaker than... Um, well, we're going to jump ahead a little bit to I Am The Weapon, which is the title track and also has been out since the end of April. So five months and I'm just not a patient guy. I'm going to listen to uh, I'm going to listen to whatever you throw at me to. I, I, I couldn't hold out to hear this whole album. So when I did finally get this album, you know, I already really had four tracks um, if you include uh, Burn My Bridges, which was uh, the third track they released. So I already had four tracks that I've listened to multiple times. So the first, which are good songs to Burn My Bridges is, what did I, I, I jotted a couple notes down just to get, keep me, keep me thinking. Um, yeah, bit more mid-tempo, but the drums really stick out in here. Uh, the guitar solos throughout are awesome. Um, Steve and Michael make a, a great pair. But if you jump ahead here to The Head of the Snake, which is the first new track I heard last Friday, one of my absolute favorites. Uh, the starts off with the drums and then it kicks into this awesome riff. There is an outro solo on that song that will remind you a little bit of... Um, Actually, probably the solo on No Place for Disgrace. It's kind of got that eerie uh, sound. And then where it kind of, the track that I, I didn't really, does not stick out. It's not my, it's actually my least favorite track on here. It's called Beneath the Shadows. It's kind of got a, a groovy swing kind of to it. And uh, I just, I just, it doesn't fit the album great, but again, I, I commend these guys for throwing something in here. Now, I was thinking about where would I put this album in a ranking? Uh, don't quite know yet. Is it as good as Blood in the Water? What I loved, I don't know. I can't answer that yet either. But what I really loved about Blood in the Water is they tried a couple of things that were different that really worked. Like the songs uh, Regression or a song called Undone superb whereas beneath the shadows didn't quite work for me on this one um so that and then we jump to gates of hell so flip it over to the b side or if you have the cd whatever track um track seven which is it's the heaviest track on the album and it absolutely ends with a crushing Man, almost something like from 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 a death metal album, and 
the there's a little tiny outro solo on that one I guess I can stop holding this one up too. I also picked this one up on CD too. Like, uh, like I said, one of my favorite bands, multiple formats, CDs, cassettes, whatever. But, um, but the outro solo on Gates of Hell would remind me of something Dave Mustaine would do on like Peace Cells. Fantastic. And then we have the next track, Cold Steel Lights, which is one of the faster paced tracks on the album. And um, I really can hear some some Iron Maiden nuances, especially like kind of the dueling guitars and things like that. It just kind of gets me thinking about Iron Maiden. And, you know, I mean, obviously Iron Maiden's been around for years and are influential on tons of bands. And then we got, um, so yeah, Don't Mind Cold Steel light at t Lights at All, Kings of the Underworld. Um, I really like that track, Eric absolutely spits out those vocals for the um building up to the chorus just non-stop i don't even know how he gets that many words out but and one thing i it, have i i don't even know if i mentioned it but eric just has not lost anything on those vocals and his lyrics are just they're very intelligent they're not there's no rhyming for rhyming sake you know maybe the odd one time type of thing but other than that he can really tell a story and uh, i definitely appreciate that on these i'm not always the lyric guy I, i'm there for the music but um yeah and great great album uh, or sorry t uh, track names things like that and then we got running through the fire i, I would say you know probably my second least favorite a little bit repetitive on the chorus uh, there is a breakdown around the 230 mark that i really enjoy it kind of goes into just some slower melodic uh almost electric acoustic guitars and um i want to mention and bill bodley on bass fantastic job and you'll notice on at least these past two flotsam and jetsam albums the bass isn't always just trucking along with the guitar riff. There are several tracks on this album that the bass is just out in no man's land and it sounds awesome. It fits. Um, this track, um, Burning, sorry, Running Through the Fire, I know I said it's probably my second least favorite, but it's still great. But it reminds me actually of... Um, tracks that might feature on this album that i'm listening to called ugly noise a little more proggy um yeah I, I would say just a touch on the prog side and then you wrap up this album with to me you couldn't have picked a better closer on this album called black wings um i'd say it's one of my favorite tracks on the album and like i said just a fitting closing track almost like um what was that one where um what was it called seven seven seconds till the end of the world which was the closing track on blood in the water uh, you know similar great closer like that but yeah so flotzilla is back and strong um i would say and i have said before if you're just hanging on to those first two albums from flots doomsday and no place for the disgrace no place for disgrace and you kind of fell off with them, you know, when they hit, when the storm comes down. Then they got really proggy with uh, Quattro. Actually, not super proggy with Quattro, but proggy. And then more proggy with um, Drift and then back into the metal with albums like High. Then they, to me, they lost their way a little bit. And then they, some, but there is some great albums, even from the early... Um, like 2014 or or was that is this 2012 whatever and uh, even the album before that called the cold really good album too but if you're enjoying what flotsam and jetsam have done for even these past now four albums let's hold all these up i don't know if they're in order doesn't matter but if you've been enjoying what they've been doing since 2016 there's no reason in the world that you wouldn't enjoy this. Uh, again, great choruses, catchy hooks. 
uh, great vocals and that's the one thing for a thrash band Eric's vocals do really stick out and um, and just the musicianship highly underrated go check out that uh, link that I will leave for the grass pop um, show I don't I don't know when that was I think it was just in June or if you happen to stumble on this video and you were at that show let me know because man would I have loved to be there only seven tracks but they absolutely crushed it I would love to see a full set of, uh, you know, you know, 12, 15 tracks type of thing. But there is my thoughts on the brand new Flotsam and Jetsam album. Let me know in the comments. Are you a fan? Have you picked up this new album? But yeah, I hope you enjoyed that one. Until next time, stay heavy.